Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy and thank you so much for joining me for it. So the Acolyte trailer debuted on Tuesday and with it came a bunch of additional media including nine new entries in the databank or I guess I should say uh, eight new entries and one updated one. But if you remember the, but do you remember back when Lucasfilm first announced the cast for the Acolyte they had that very cool nine image collage with the actors who are going to be appearing in it well yeah there is a bit of an issue with that <laughs> and I will explain as we go through the databank entries and what we might learn from them for a start we'll talk about the one databank entry that was updated and that's the one for Vanestra Rowe who has already appeared in High Republic storytelling in phase one and phase three and is going to appear in the acolyte she's being played by Rebecca Henderson so this is what the entry says now Vernestra Rowe is an elder Jedi Master who has ascended the ranks of the Jedi from a teenage prodigy to a leader in the Order. She became one of the youngest Jedi Knights in a generation at age 15 and solidified her status as a prodigy when she took Imri Kantaros uh, as a Padawan the next year. With a purple-bladed lightsaber that can change into a light whip, young Ro led with unwavering faith in the Force and devotion to the Jedi Order, but in the year after the fall of Starlight Beacon, while mourning those lost in the destruction, including her own Padawan, Vernestra pulled back from the Order and shifted her focus to heal herself. And we just talked about that not too long ago in the short story in the Tales of Light and Life collection from the High Republic Mega Ginormous Initiative, <laughs> and how basically after the fall of Starlight Beacon, she just kind of walked away from the Jedi Order and nobody really followed up with her to be like, hey, where'd Vernestra? go she just kind of decided to become a way seeker in her own right but here we are near I guess basically a hundred years after the events of phase three of High Republic storytelling and she's back with the Jedi Order she is a Jedi master now and it looks like based on what we were talking about in yesterday's episode about there potentially being three different time periods that we might see in the Acolyte season she might well appear in all of them and the reason I say that is because in that opening scene where uh, we're getting Master Soul talking to the younglings and the one youngling that may or may not be May in you know, early days, in that scene, Vernestra Rowe is in the background of that. So she's in the place where that potential May character is at her youngest in that moment. And as a brief side note, just for you know future conversations, so the character May is described with a she pronoun in the databank, whereas Amanda Stenberg, the actor, is someone who uses she they pronouns. And so I think to be on the safe side and to be careful and considerate, I will use they pronouns for Amanda when I'm speaking about the actor versus when I'm talking about May, the character, who is described as a she by the Lucasfilm folks. So back to the original point. Vanessa Rowe is in a scene with what appears to be potentially a young May and then 20 years later we have an older May in the story and Vernestra Rowe is still kicking around and is going to be part of the story so yeah it seems like Vernestra Rowe has been back with the Jedi Order for at least 20 years and probably longer by this point and you know is now an elder master doesn't say anything about the Jedi Council though but does say that she is kind of revered around her Jedi circles so that'll be interesting to see where the council fits into this whole thing. And now we go on to the new databank entries, which includes May, so we'll just go right to May, and it doesn't say much. It says, May gets swept up into a sinister mystery, one that puts her into the center of a conflict in unexpected ways. And you know, we talked about this a little bit in yesterday's episode dissecting the trailer because of the fact that we get the holes, you know, somebody's killing Jedi and it looks like somebody who is dressed like May is attacking a meditating Jedi and it looks like someone who, you know, looks like May is attacking Carrie Ann Moss as uh, Master Andara. Uh, yeah, but is it really May or is it someone else? Is it... <laughs> somebody uh you know in whatever you know particular group of people that may had previously been a part of or is a part of now yeah it, it definitely opens up some possibilities there then we have Lee Chong Che who plays Master Soul this is what we get about Master Soul it says he's a wise highly respected powerful Jedi master strong in the ways of the force who is going through emotional conflict that little detail is a bit of a surprise certainly 
but we don't necessarily see any of that emotional conflict. We just see dramatic conflict happening in the trailer. But why emotional conflict? Well, I mean, it certainly might have something to do with what's happening with you know these mysterious Jedi killings, but also then being reunited with May, who was once his Padawan. That probably brings up some difficult things and maybe that interstitial time period that we've talked about between you know youngling may and current day may in the acolyte that that third period might be an in-between period where may actually goes out on her own and so then current day timing in the acolyte as it were is there reuniting and whatever happened to bust them apart in the past might be causing some of that emotional difficulty right now then we have jackie who is played by daphne keen jackie is the Padawan apprentice to Master Saul. Although she is young, she projects calm and conducts herself with maturity. Doesn't give us a lot to go on, but as the Padawan of Master Saul, there's a good chance she's probably picking up on some of that emotional conflict. So that'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Then we have the entry for Kel Naka, a Wookiee Jedi who is a loner who lives a solitary life. Again, another situation where we don't have a lot to go on, but as we saw in the trailer, there is a moment where Kel Naka is a part of a group of Jedi that are going to, you know, possibly talk to someone, question someone. It kind of looks like it's that, you know, mother character played by Jody Turner-Smith. Just the way that things are framed, maybe, but we don't know that for sure. However, the point that I'm trying to flag here is that Kelnaka is with this group of Jedi, and then there's another scene where we see him out in the forest, and that seems to be possibly a little bit later in his life when he is in that loner kind of position. Now, Kelnaka is played by Yuna Suthamo. If I've gotten anywhere near close to the pronunciation on that, he was not announced with the initial cast announcement, that Grid of Nine folks. So, you know, keep that in the back of your mind as we continue to work down the list. So that's the first five databank entries, and I think that's a good place to pause for now, and we can pick up the other five databank entries on tomorrow's episode, which will also include a reference to who is missing and who was strangely added unexpectedly. And so that is going to do it for this episode of the podcast, though. If you enjoy the show and think more people should hear this Daily Dose of Star Wars Joy, please consider doing a couple of things like making sure that you rate or review the podcast on your favorite app if you haven't done it already and hitting the like or subscribe or follow or join button both of those actions are very algorithm friendly <laughs> let's put it that way and even just telling people in real life or online that this daily dose of star wars joy exists for them that's helpful too and if you really want to help support the creation and production of this podcast, you can do it for as little as a dollar a month or even a couple of dollars more if you like at patreon.com slash SW7X7. Those sevens are numbers, SW, the number seven, the letter X and the number seven. And it just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for this episode as always. And may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be. 7 by 7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars-related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited, but their respective trademark and copyright holders may the force be with them. All original content is copyrighted by Star Wars 7 by 7 We hope you love it.